Sunday Hoops in the Hill City, and we are so glad you are joining us for the first edition of ODAC basketball this season. We've had a few non-conference matchups here in Turner Gymnasium, but it's going to be EMU taking on Lynchburg. Evan Gates, Sam Graham taking you through it. And we'll jump right into it, Sam, as we get a look at the team comparison. These are two squads that are pretty evenly matched this year. Yeah, Evan, you know, this last week's been great. Obviously, Thanksgiving break. We'll see if there's any, you know, leftover hangover, if you will, in these two teams. So you might have a slow start working off that turkey from this past week. Everybody got a lot of good eating, and these two teams going to hope to eat a lot today. A pair of star players, probably none better than a VUA Malong, and two teams that are pretty similar, you know, two teams that, that like to shoot the three. Uh, both probably wishing they were shooting it at a slightly higher clip, but I think that's a big thing to watch today because Lynchburg's, at, at times can fall back on taking a lot of those three-point attempts, uh, but they're facing an EMU team today that is really good at defending the three. They'll pick Lynchburg up at half court. They defend the perimeter really well. They close out really well. All those good discipline type things defensively, uh, and I think this game will be won on defense. Lynchburg, big, big difference in, in how the defense has looked in wins versus losses so far this year, so I think that's going to be a big key to watch intensity and just energy level on that defensive side. We see a look at some of the keys to the game for EMU. It's all about getting to the free throw line, 23 for 26 in their last matchup, as well as rebounding. Lynchburg has been out-rebounded every game except that last contest versus Methodist. And then for the Hornets, have to defend the perimeter and really lock down as well as running and gunning. We'll step away for the National Anthem right back in Turner Gymnasium. Evan Gates, Sam Graham on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. If you're just joining us, it's the Royals taking on the Hornets. You know, after Thanksgiving break, students might start funneling in here and there, but I'm still trying to get over Thanksgiving meal. I mean, I had an awesome week. I don't know about you, Graham. Yeah, it was fantastic. I, I you know, I think tried to convince myself to do as, as little work as possible, rest and recharge, but super excited to be back here today. And honestly, it's a bit of a deja vu moment. Uh, you know, realized yesterday that uh, exactly what I was doing at this time, November 26, 2022. Uh, I was in this gym. Uh, sadly, I was uh, alone today. Luckily, a little bit of company with you, Evan. Looking forward to a rematch between these two teams. But yeah, November 26 last year, it was a Lynchburg double-digit win over this EMU team. EMU got their get back in that second meeting in February. Uh, they lead the all-time season series. And like we were saying in the uh, you know before we went on the air today, Evan, it's kind of rare that two teams will split a season series one to one. And, and both games be determined by double digits, but that's what we had in this game last year. We'll see if we have a little bit of a closer contest today. Well, we've seen that throughout the ODAC as well. There are teams that go on these hot runs. This is such a talented conference, and especially in the Commonwealth with Division Three. Oh, by the way, the national champions from last year, Christopher Newport, are right down the road. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the starters as you hear them introduced by our wonderful PA announcer, Kyle Haney. And for Eastern Mennonite, Somewhat new look, but they're still staying familiar. It's Di Jordan Brown, Jamil Davis, Avewe Malong, our player to watch. He has been sensational, averaging 17 and just about five rebounds a game. 
Number 22 down low, Michael Watlington. He will have a really big impact, especially from the high post. And number 32, Nick Andres, one of those guys who can go out and get numbers. And for Eastern Mennonite, we know what Aviwe Malone can do, but it's all about coming out and seeing what this Lynchburg defense poses. We know they're going to be after him today. So I think the big focus is going to be on the guards. And, I mean, truthfully, Aviwe Malone, more of a wing, sort of that guard forward combo, but he's going to bring the ball up a decent bet. He and De Jordan Brown are going to split duty there. And, and those two guards, I'm going to say guards for today, they've been fantastic this year, com, you know, combining for about 26, 27 points per game coming in and both kind of do it all guards. De Jordan Brown a little bit more on the playmaking side of UA Malong. He can go inside out, give you some mid range. Not going to take a ton of threes, but he can certainly stroke it from there. And then finally, Michael Watlington. Uh, this isn't a team that's going to dominate down low necessarily. And Watlington, more of an extended, elongated frame, but super athletic, super long. He's going to pose a matchup problem potentially for this Lynchburg team. That's going to be a point of emphasis. Well, this is a Hornets team that rolls out with the same starting lineup for the fifth straight game to start this season. And you're familiar with them as we take a look. Jake Hart and DeAndre Ross in that backcourt. Very fast, very talented. We know Jake Hart leads the team with 20 assists. Jonathan Faust, Cameron O'Connor down low. And then the sophomore, the local guy, Pearson Young. He has been sensational this year. As Lynchburg will be in the grays, EMU and blue. And while break is just ending, maybe it's pop quiz time in Turner Gymnasium. Get out your pencils as we are ready for the first ODAC contest of the season. Super important for both of these teams to get a win today, and obviously Lynchburg is the home team. You really want to take advantage. They got a winnable game against Randolph coming up in the midweek as well. And for EMU, they finally get to play at home after six straight road games, but they're going to play against one of the more interesting teams in the conference, Washington and Lee, coming up uh, Wednesday, I believe. ODAC play really starting to heat up as Brown from outside. It rims out Malong with a long rebound, and EMU can reset. Long shots, long rebounds. That's something these two teams are used to with the clip that they shoot the three at. Watlington trying to drive inside. Malone, nice work from this Lynchburg defense. Shot clock running down. Brown doing everything he can. It's going to be an offensive foul. Great defensive possession for Lynchburg there. Obviously, you get beat to the loose ball, and that's a bit unfortunate, and then you give up an offensive rebound as well, but the intensity and the effort was there all the way throughout that possession for Lynchburg. I mean, both teams did some good stuff there, but that first shot that came off from DeJordan Brown was a good bit off the mark. That's a rush shot, so I'd say Lynchburg overall, obviously with zeros on the scoreboard, wins that first possession. Defense always something you can control, and Lynchburg looks to do it again today. EMU, a squad that usually will guard the perimeter tightly. They don't want to give up any easy threes today, but as Lynchburg moves it around, still looking for the opening bucket as Dre Ross will pop back and fire. Great shot there from Ross. Again, we've talked about Malong, and, and he'll be somebody to watch offensively for EMU, but you want to talk about a guy that can get you a bucket from anywhere. DeAndre Ross certainly fits the bill in that category for Lynchburg. One of the best of these uh, Several really good newcomers uh, for Coach Scott's squad in 2023. We know eight new faces on this Lunchburg roster. Right now, the Royals just a little disjointed trying to get the offense going. See Brown again moving inside. Nice cut from Aviwe Malone. And the hoop and harm. How about a three-point play? Yeah, so a couple things to break down from this play. First things first, I thought Lynchburg did a great job. DeAndre Ross came off, sealed the dribble handoff, and he actually had a collision between teammates there. And isolated Watlington really far away from the basket. He does well to pass out of it. And then ultimately good players make good plays, right, Evan? And, and Brown, you know, feeds it to uh, Malone cutting to the basket. That's really hard to defend. Well, that cutting action from EMU, you're going to see it quite a bit with the way that their offense works. And... Obviously, college basketball, you always have cuts, and timing is so important, but EMU doing nice work to find their man. Lynchburg has had good starts throughout the season, even in that Mary Washington loss where they were outscored 42-19 to in the second half. They went up 7-0 to start that contest. So Connor steps on the line, and we're heading the other way. Good effort there from Cam O'Connor, trying to save that in for Lynchburg, but yeah, he stepped on the line. And some interesting defensive matchups to note. We got uh, Malong is going to guard at least to start out here in this EMU uh, man defense. He's on Jonathan Faust. And then on the flip side, now Kavon James checking in for Pearson Young. But big size disadvantage on the other side is Kavon James, although Lynchburg is in that zone right now, he's going to be on a V-Way Malong. 
EMU a very long, agile team. They have looks from around the court. Number three guarding number three, Malone trying to make something work. And foul will be caught on James. Good defense from James though, and he's probably the premier uh, on-ball defender uh, for Lynchburg. Obviously coming off the bench here, but giving some good reserve minutes for Coach Scott. Uh, averaging right around a steal per game, and there's quite a few Lynchburg guys that can say that in the early going here this year. Defense has been so crucial. And in that opener against Regent, they forced 22 turnovers in the first half. Talk about energy. Hornets have been humming. We know Coach Hillary Scott loves when his guys get involved, all five of them. Shot clock low again. And dribbled off the foot of Davis, and Lynchburg will possess. And for the second time today, and again, I, I don't say this to, to be picky or to, to say that he's not capable, but Lynchburg has done a really good job isolating Watlington far away from the basket. Again, he's not necessarily going to make his money down low, but EMU's got some good passers. He's probably not one of the top uh, passing options, so that, that possession sort of unraveled when he got stuck up top. O'Connor, good spacing, was unable to corral, but EMU travels, so we'll stay right here. Lynchburg, a team that has those different offensive looks. You talked about Watlington at the high post. He is one of those guys that really allows you to spread your offense out. But as we see a couple of substitutions, EMU will roll with number two, Aaron Brooks, into the game. The freshman from Fredericksburg as Faust goes up and will get two shots. Lynchburg coming out from under their own basket, opens up in the square, the four points there. And a good play as uh, DeAndre Ross moves up to seal off with a screen, try to give a lane for Jonathan Faust cutting to the basket. That's a pretty high percentage shot. It does go off the mark, but gets to the free throw line for the first time today. Faust, one of those guys all around the court. Lynchburg, also a team that needs to get to the free throw line and connect. We talked about EMU's percentage in the last game, 23 for 26. And Lynchburg, a team that has shot 73% through four games, so still looking to get to the free throw line, but you have to earn the freebies. As Faust's second shot rims out, and EMU heading the other way. Early goings here from the Hill City. First ODAC contest for either of these squads and EMU's sixth and final away game to start the season. Lynchburg switched to man, getting a couple of different defensive looks to the CMU team early on. That man, so much communication has to happen. Foul will be on O'Connor. And EMU will pack it down low. This isn't the only game going on right now in the Hill City. Bridgewater is traveling to Randolph, just 10 minutes down the road. We'll keep our eye on that one. Nice cut down low. How about better defense from O'Connor? But the second chance will go for Jalen Jones. Two teams combined to average about 21 offensive rebounds per game. Uh, 11 for EMU, 10 for Lynchburg. So the boards are going to be huge today, as they always are. But you know, especially speaking about in this particular game, Lynchburg. Working around the perimeter, O'Connor down low. We've seen a few targets to him, and this time just off the backboard, but he had a really good look. Malong spots up from three, and off the mark. The Hornets can run. Dre Ross, how about a little Euro step and English. Ross on the offensive end, he's got a deep bag of tricks. He's reached into it twice already tonight. We saw the step back deep two-point jumper and he backs it up. He's got four of Lynchburg's five points early on and what's been a pretty defensive battle so far. Dre Ross, one of those guys. Faust, the block on the three-point line. Don't see that every day. Just again, to point out that athleticism, seems like everybody on this roster can get up and get out as Malong will take it in the far corner. That was 6'6", Jalen Jones, that was the shooter in that shot blocked by Faust, certainly no. Faust is a good athlete, but that is not an easy shot to block. Lots of timing involved as well. Shot from far beyond the perimeter, and Ray Ross will corral, looking to run again. Good offense to know when to slow it down, when to speed it up. It seems like the Hornets are getting used to that early in the season, and as we see Jake Hart, the one guard taking over, different looks all around. O'Connor down low, front rim. 
And EMU bodies everywhere, but finally Brown will gather. Yeah, you're starting to see it early on today, Evan. This is going to be a hard-fought battle all the way throughout. Most of these ODAC games are, and this is a really good conference for basketball. So that, that hustle level is just going to pick up a little bit. Not that these two teams haven't wanted to win the other games they've been in, but you know, you know it's just a little bit of a different story when you get into those familiar opponents, especially everybody being within the state of Virginia. You probably always know at least somebody on the opposing team. Well, always fun to look at some of the high school connections. As we saw on the offensive foul from Brown, that's the second on EMU to start this contest. And Lynchburg getting some defensive stops. As last year, we saw some pretty high scoring games between these two teams. We know that Lynchburg was in the 80s to win that game, and EMU scored 91 in the season finale. Two very different squads. First time seeing Mason Makovic and Miles Taylor here. It's going to be Taylor with the shot. And perfect from the corner, Miles Taylor, leading scorer against Methodist. He's coming out and picking up right where he left off. When we spoke with Coach Scott before the season even started, he said what he's really asking from uh, his senior wing there in Taylor is consistency. And so far, it's sort of been one off game, one good game, one off game, one good game for Taylor. So I think it's crucial to see if he can get into double digits and make a big impact on this game. He checks in and immediately knocks down a three. So that's certainly a great start. Well, Taylor, one of those guys who can play every position on the floor. We're going to take a quick break from Turner Gymnasium, but it's the Hornets by three early on in the Sunday contest. Live in the dream. USA, Mexico. I was so excited. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line room. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience. The ODAC opener here in Lynchburg as the Hornets taking on EMU and two squads looking to get off on the right foot. We know especially with Christmas break looming as students return from Thanksgiving, it's always important to try and get in a rhythm before things change in December, a month that can really dictate the rest of your schedule. Yeah, and I love that the ODAC does this portion here early season where you get the chance to see some conference opponents. I think that just spices up the schedule a little bit and adds some intrigue when you flip the calendar over to the new year. You approach that big meat of the conference schedule, but you go into some sort of idea of like, okay, this is sort of where we stack up. This is how we've done. You, you break out those sorted stats and look at conference only and say this is where we need to improve. I think that's really valuable to get this action in early in the year. And not many conferences, if you look at the D1 level, get that experience. It's becoming more popular now. As Faust gets a hand on it, somehow keeps it in bounds. He's going to work to the basket, up and in. How about John Faust and the energy he's bringing early? Yeah, that's a great just drive to the basket, put his head down, knew exactly what he wanted to do. Malone got back well, tried to draw the charge. Faust does great to avoid him. And then talking about the steal, just read that pass the whole way like he was a DB, just broke on it at the right time and managed to keep it in bounds. Six points and three rebounds a game for Faust. Quick offense again for Lynchburg as we see Jordan Parham in the game for the first time. And once again, rotating this offense. Lots of cuts. We've seen Cam O'Connor down low. Now Makovic and Saylor, the two big guys for the Hornets. Now look inside. Hart pass to Makovic. Patient and up and in. Jake Hart, one of those guys. He's one of the best passers on this team. And showing it once again that the Hornets can move the ball. 
Yeah, and, you know, I've been super impressed by Makovic uh, so far this year. I was impressed with him last year, and he had a good game against this EMU team a season ago as well. Uh, just seems to have really settled into his role well. Went from about a .6 point per game score as a freshman. Bumped that up to about three and a half last year and comes into tonight averaging about five points a game and those rebounding numbers following suit as well, just trending upward. And just a really you know gritty player, hardworking player. And obviously there, super patient, takes a good feed, passes up the first shot, waits for a better one, gets the bucket and Lynchburg's largest lead of the day. Well, we know that those are situations where you get a guy who develops in the system. He can really grow his confidence, but also grow his basketball IQ. Lynchburg on a 9-0 run in the last 334. So EMU just trying to pick it up. Sam, what are you seeing from this Royals offense that needs to improve? I think the first thing that sticks out is they're over four from three. And I don't think a lot of these three-point opportunities have been particularly great looks. And you have a team that, yes, you have four guys coming into today that are shooting over 35% from deep. But as a team, you're only 31%. It's not bad, but you're not exactly a team that maybe needs to be jacking up these shots from deep. I mean, there was one that came from the logo. There was one that was off balance from that Jordan Brown, that not really because of the shot clock ticking down, just seemed like he settled for that shot. So I think shot selection's the big piece. If Ewe Malong has taken two shots in this game, I think you gotta get the ball to your best player. And then putting Watlington in better situations as well. That's arguably your second best player, at least two of your top three, and they're just not getting a lot of looks so far. Well, throughout the season, we've seen Watlington, if you watch some of EMU's games, he likes to cut down low from that high post, and Lynchburg has done a great job of slamming the door shut, hence the reason that head coach Melvin Felix called the timeout. But out of the break, it's going to be Jones for three. He misses everything, and the Hornets will get possession as Jason Easton steps into the ballgame. And again, a lot of times as announcers, right, Evan, it feels like you say something and then immediately a team listens to you and they correct it. On that one, you know, I just – Makovic's coming in, you, you see he's given the close out, he's there in time, and you're shooting that shot with what, 20, 18 seconds left on the shot clock? I just feel like you gotta be a little bit more patient if you're EMU, you don't wanna get into a track meet with Lynchburg. We see EMU going into zone defense out of the break, and we like to think that they're listening to us, we'll have to wait and see the rest of the game. How it goes, Hart, nice wraparound pass to JP in the corner, but he can't connect. Lynchburg now about Miles Taylor, the offensive rebound. He'll go to the line for two. I love everything about that possession. You know, Makovic caught it in a tough spot, got his way out of the double team, was smart to pass it out, got it to his point guard. His point guard makes a play. I love that shot from Jordan Parham. I've said it every broadcast so far. If he's a spot-up shooter over there in the wing and you can find him, he's got a great release. He's got a great-looking shot. He can knock those down. And then Taylor picks up the offensive rebound, goes back strong to the basket, and again, you draw another foul. So Lynchburg... Try to do that a little bit more as this game goes on. You know, get the ball inside a little more. They've had a lot of success with that early in the year. And when they've done it today, they've either made a layup or they've gone to the line. So, Well, the easiest shots in basketball come from that free throw line. And we know that, especially with a team that shoots lots of three-pointers, they are going to have some long rebounds, you have to judge. As Avila Malong steps back in, he'll replace the Jordan Brown. Four points again here for Lynchburg. Keep an eye on Jason Easton. That's that screen from Parham. That was the same play as last time. Just weren't able to get it to Easton. Good job being patient by Hart. Looks like the pass just trickled through. We'll wait to see who the foul is on. It looks like it's going to be number 15, Kai Johnson. So Hornets under the bucket, up eight with 12.03 to play. Yeah, I think if you're Coach Scott, You've had so many different looking games early in the season, and that's non-conference play. We know that there are different teams, but the energy has been good at the start of every one, just hoping to keep it as in transition. It's a nice bucket from Aaron Brooks. It's a really, really tough shot. Good concentration there from Brooks, just keeping his eye on the basket all the way through. Tough shot, good make. Taylor won't even let us catch our breath. He goes the other end, and Lynchburg, a team that likes transition, but even on made buckets, it seems like they get out and make sure they have that good look in transition. EMU trying to settle. It's going to be a foul on Parham. Lynchburg bench doesn't like it. Yeah, to, to follow on your previous point there, Evan, yeah, this Lynchburg team does a really good job of creating its own transition. At times, you might get into your own way a little bit with that. You don't want to get too fast, but yeah, especially off of made baskets, 
that's where you might see a little bit of celebrating from the other team. They might be a little slower to get back. Lynchburg will push it up. DeAndre Ross does a great job of that. He's not in the game right now, but yeah, it's a Lynchburg team that, again, if you can't always get out and transition off a steal, create it for yourself. Always an opportunity to run. Should be noted, both teams with six fouls right now, so might see the bonus early. As Miles Taylor again, nobody stopping him in traffic. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Evan. That's what a mechanic will tell you. That's what I'm going to tell you as well. Miles Taylor eating his second helping of turkey down low so far today. One of the veterans, a junior from Jamestown, North Carolina. He knows how to get it done, and you got to stay with what's true. Malone outside. It's a long three again. Just seems like EMU settling a little too early for those threes, but Lynchburg's defense making them earn every step they get. Taylor. How about back to the rim? Still finds a way to get the offensive rebound. Mid-air pass and a nice steal from Brooks. Heading the other way. He's not going to be touched and off the glass for two. Brooks is the fastest player on the court. He showed it right there. Two great transition baskets for number two, Brooks. And that's, that's huge because if it's not for him, breaking on some of these balls and creating those easy opportunities in transition, this is probably a 12-point game. Four early points off the bench for Brooks. Lynchburg still surveying with his offense. He tried to get another one. Parham, the mid-range, will just rim out Watlington with the rebound. Yeah, right now, you know, you don't want to get too much into heat checks, but if I'm Lynchburg right now, I'm trying to get Miles Taylor the ball every time down. Obviously, they're doing a great job working it to him in transition, but give him some paint touch. This is a big man game for Miles Taylor. He's a strong uh, sort of combo, you know, can play really any position, but this is a game where we could really see him eat down low. He has so far. And Jason Easton, one of those guys who could take it from three this time off the mark. And Miles Taylor, an easy eight so far to start this contest of Iwe Malong on the other side. And off the mark again, EMU still searching for its first three-pointer of the game. Easton. Second time, he connects. He doesn't miss for long, and if you leave him open, he'll make you pay. Easton's percentage, he was the top three-point shooter a season ago. Lynchburg, we'll see if they get Elijah Davis today. He had his first action after nursing a hamstring injury, came in for two minutes against Methodist. That's another capable scorer from three. Lynchburg limiting those three-point attempts so far today, only taken four, I believe, two of them by Easton. And only around 36% coming into today, but again, no, he can knock him down from deep. Parham a little short on the three. Hart the dish down low to Makovic. And we're seeing the point guard to the big man once again. That connection has been there all day long. Second time, patience proves key there for Makovic down low. Could have taken the shot two times earlier, utilizes the pump fake, and eventually gets the super easy basket in close. We'll see a slew of substitutions. O'Connor, Young, and Dre Ross stepping back in for Lynchburg. The starters back in. We've seen some good minutes from Aaron Brooks on EMU side as they go with number 55, Miles McIntyre. So you hear Kyle Haney, Jamil Davis back in the game as well. Lynchburg looking to spread the offense. Pearson Young near that high post. So we might see that matchup exposed. Parham maybe settled, not taking that shot, but the lane open for Dre Ross and smooth. And the rim, it was out of bounds on EMU. We'll have to wait for clarity on that call, but the Hornets will have possession again. It may, I don't think it was out of bounds. I think it may have been, can't have been an offensive foul. They granted the basket to DeAndre Ross. I think that might have been a flop warning. We'll see, I, hopefully. Our guy Kyle down low, okay, well, whatever it was, they decided against it. The EMU pressure, I guess, changed the mind of our official down along the baseline. He, he never really said anything in particular, but again, offensive foul wouldn't make any sense. Might have been on the line when he passed it in. We'll have to go back and look at some of the replays from that. Either way, Brooks to McIntyre down low. Pearson Young wanted a block. He's called for the foul. And Young will pick up his first foul of the game. And for a guy that sort of plays that small forward position, we've seen him with his size, he can still get up. 
Absolutely, and now to the line goes EMU in the bonus now, just under eight minutes to go. So opportunity maybe to make good on some of those free throws as they did last game out against Goucher and an area where they've struggled a little bit on the year. Lynchburg, a pretty decided advantage in that margin. That's something Lynchburg was good at last year and that's continued for the most part into this year. It's a good free throw shooting team, very sound at the line. Always have to take the freebies as we said in the pregame show, EMU, a team that went 23 for 26 last game. And McIntyre gets it to go. Lynchburg up 13, a little bit of full court pressure from EMU. The first half, if you switch your defense, you also have to be careful about letting that transition go. I know the Hornets can get in the run as Young will get a healthy bounce as it goes down for his first points of the ball game. Now we roll through three minutes since EMU last found the back of the net on a field goal, 10-23 the last make, and they're now 0 for 8 from downtown as well, but it's going to be another three-point opportunity here. Finally, EMU connects. Jameel Davis will rim in the first three for the Royals, and it's one for nine now to start this contest. But as you said, they're in the bonus, and if you get into a bit of a slog fest late in this first half, that might still help you if you can get the easy ones at the line, but you also have to defend the perimeter, and Cam O'Connor sinks it. Cam O'Connor 50% from deep so far on the year. That was coming in. That shot makes him five for nine. A guy that can score pretty much from anywhere on the floor. They love to run the offense through him. That's decreased a little bit as you've seen Jake Hart, I think, get a lot more confident as his young college career uh, progresses. But on the other side, answering twos with threes is Jameel Davis. Maybe a little disdain on the Lynchburg bench after that first three-pointer he made. Blew a kiss to the Lynchburg sideline, so that'll be something to monitor. We'll have to see if the energy spikes a little bit after that one. For Coach Melvin Felix, wonder what you're thinking as Jason Easton tries to get the three no good. Very streaky start to this game. Seems like it's been a little bit of heat and then going cold for a few minutes. We'll see if EMU can keep it up. McIntyre is going to fire a three and connects. So after not making any of their first eight, EMU has now sunk three straight from behind the perimeter. Pearson Young feels like an all-star game, just back and forth down the court. And we had a feeling we might see some of that transition today while three shooting all around. A bit strange, nothing changed out of a timeout, but now just up and down the floor we go. Both teams trading three-pointers or at least three-point attempts. I did think those first two attempts by Jameel Davis were really good looks for EMU. The last one, it was a good closeout by Cam O'Connor, just a better shot, good concentration. Maybe EMU taking the lid off the basket, settling into things a little bit here in their sixth game away from home to start the year. Tried to make it the fourth straight, unable to connect was McIntyre. So we see him at that high post like Watlington trying to just disperse the ball. Dre Ross, he had nice penetration, just sailed the pass a little long. And back into the game, it's Jake Hart for Lynchburg and number 15, Kai Johnson for EMU. Got to see the burners there on DeAndre Ross. He got to about the Hornet logo after lulling the defense to sleep, put on the Jets, did a good job getting to the basket. Thought maybe you'd just go ahead and go up strong with that, probably draw a, a foul as there were, I believe, three EMU defenders down there in the painted area. But instead, tries to make the, the good teammate pass and get it out to O'Connor in the corner, just could not connect with him. Talk about good passing. How about the dish from Aviwe Malong down low? And suddenly just a 10-point ball game. We'll have to see what Lynchburg continues to do against this zone defense. Like lots of reversing. We see Pearson Young just trying to be big at that high post. O'Connor again from the corner. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And timeout from head coach Hillary Scott. Lynchburg up 13, and we'll go to break from the Hill City, but lots of good action and the ODAC opener. Be right back on the Lynchburg Hornet Sports Network. Tim Slusser from the Outdoor Leadership Program gave a presentation at a teaching and learning resources conference here about getting his program more involved on the academic side of campus. I mentioned uh, computers and mapping and he mentioned caving and eventually we came up with the idea of mapping caves. So the week before we were able to learn how to use the instruments kind of like on a flat surface and just kind of get a hang of how they work. 
but it was really amazing how once we got in the cave, it was a completely different experience using them. Well, we've seen lots of repetition early on from these two offenses finding ways to score. Lynchburg, you know, if you're a Hornets fan, pretty excited with what this team has posed today, not getting too one-dimensional with the three, and both teams a little hot in the stretch. How about Cam O'Connor? He's going to have to watch out for Malong and finishes for two. Cam O'Connor making an impact on the scoring sheet early on. He did so in his first game uh, with his new team, the graduate transfer from Longwood. Led the Hornets in scoring first game out against Regent. Been a little more quiet as of late, but a quick eight here tonight. Doing it from everywhere on the floor. Little tangle down low. Easton and Ross had to watch and make sure that wasn't a travel. See two guys on the same team, but will be a foul down low as Michael Watlington comes back into the game. So Evan, we had, a, we had a really slow start to the game offensively. Obviously we got to that first media timeout and it was like, okay, defense has come to play here on a Sunday afternoon. Then Lynchburg gets hot, they go up 22 to nine. EMU, the three points uh, start falling for them. Now the visiting Royals, I believe uh, four for their last five, while Lynchburg on the other side, seven for its last eight. Both teams three of four on their last four three pointers. All of a sudden it's 38 to 22 and Lynchburg trending towards 40 points before the half. Well, there was a stretch early in the game, as you said, it was 5-5, five, five, close to that break. It just seems like fire caught the building. And now everybody trying to get some confidence and get those looks. So you hear the woo drill from the Lynchburg bench. Young wanted to get the steal, but he's gonna be calling for the foul. Hornet bench applauding the effort there from Pearson Young, and it was a good effort. Just undercut his defender. Obviously, that's going to get you hit with the foul every time. But again, effort, that's like we said, that's the one thing you can always control. And defensively, Lynchburg's applying a lot of that effort and intensity. Sometimes the three ball is going to fall no matter what. But a really good opportunity here from Along, a really good free throw shooter to uh, even things up a little bit and knock down some, some free ones. One and one for EMU. Malong misses the front half. And Lynchburg will possess under he four minutes. He comes in today 75%, so th it's a guy you're comfortable with having the, the ball there at the free throw line. Just unable to hit the front end, and that's obviously the super important one. Lynchburg elects not to try and push it too much in transition. Easton from way downtown. Off the mark, you know Coach Scott is comfortable with him shooting those if he's open. EMU trying to work in transition. And... Back to that point on Malong, just three points so far in this first half. One of the guys you're going to be looking at for all conference considerations. So nice work on the defensive end, just shutting his options down as we see Taylor trying to keep him out of the lane. It's Dre Ross who intercepts and he's going to throw it down. And how about bring the house down, Dre Ross? Lynchburg making a bit of a statement here in this first half, and once again, it starts on defense. I'll take the Hornets over just about anybody when they can get out and transition, and they're doing a great job of creating those opportunities today. Corner three touches every part of the basket, but through the rim as John Faust returns for Jason Easton. And Dre Ross, we've been waiting for it. We've seen him with the hops throughout this season. He had one against Regent that if he would have finished that dunk, maybe SC top 10 material, but nice defense turning into offense and the Hornets comfortable in the final minutes of the first half. Yeah, if he'd finished that dunk, we'd probably need a new turner, or at least a new backboard there on the east side of the gym. Uh, yeah, DeAndre Ross, incredible athlete, a lot of really good athleticism on the Lynchburg team this time around. And, and yeah, somebody who can explode either with his speed or with those hops. Lynchburg to the corner, Ross and it take the three rims out. Lynchburg with nine assists so far and they're 40 points, so continuing to share the ball, but they've also found looks from around the court. Here's that speed again. Ross downhill, O'Connor as open as it's gonna get and he makes you pay. O'Connor's one of those guys, again I mentioned, he came in today 50% from three on the year. He's three for three from deep tonight, having a great impact on the offensive side. Uh, yeah, he's one of those guys, anytime he's open from three, you just, you kind of know what's gonna happen. And it's one of those, if, if he doesn't make it, you're surprised. Eight a run for Lynchburg, continuing 
to try and keep this EMU offense cold. Watlington down low says, never mind that. It's a great look for Watlington. You know, he catches it in close. He has DeAndre Ross on his back. That's a mismatch anyway, but with that 6'6 frame and super long arms, that's just an almost impossible shot to defend. Got to try to get him a little closer to the basket. Ross maybe wanted another dunk, but he will get the layup. Munchberg closing in on a 50 piece for this first half. We'll see how they respond defensively. Malong off the glass, no good, but Watlington corrals the rebound. Tough one to give up if you're Lynchburg. Had two Hornets boxing out one Royal. Somehow the Royal comes away with the rebound and then you get three points out of it. Excuse me, that'll be a deep two, but still, that second chance point. Gotta be a little frustrated if you coach Scott, but again, a, you know, near 20 point lead. You'd probably remedy that frustration. Chance to go two for one, but it looks like Lynchburg might settle. O'Connor down low. Now Ross, shifty in the lane. He gets the pass down low. And Cam O'Connor now 13 points on the day. O'Connor and Ross, 24 points between the two of them. This is a Lynchburg team. You can just see it. A light switch flips when they're playing with confidence, and that's what's happening right now. EMU will settle for the final shot of the half. Aaron Brooks out front. We see the double screen. Working outside, Malone gets his shot blocked and an exclamation mark on the first half. How about a 21 point lead and the Hornets coming out of the Thanksgiving break and they're just rolling it today. Obviously, you know, you're happy if you can get that two for one opportunity there at the end of the half. But again, instead you wait Say we're confident in our defense, we'll get a stop, let's get the best shot we can get here. You find it, another layup, an easy bucket there for Cam O'Connor who's been great in this first half. And then how about Jonathan Faust? This is a Lynchburg team that's averaging two blocks per game on the year. That's a little low. Faust has two blocks on the perimeter in the first half tonight. Great impact on the defensive end for Faust. Things are clicking for Lynchburg. Faust, one of those guys that won't always show up on the stat sheet, but today on the defensive end, really putting in the work. 47-26 Lynchburg will come back with some halftime stats and analysis right here in Turner Gymnasium from the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interaction with, with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities, learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible, by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, academics to pursue my career a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. 
the professors here are really unique. They, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. Day. Jess and I are officially on a break. The couple hey, canoe no, has broken up. <laughs> How are you feeling? Living the dream. Just canoeing. That's the Mexican side behind me. Um, the U.S. is that way. So far, we're all still alive. I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. My name is Alexis Fabula. I major in criminology and I double minor in psychology and criminal forensics. My favorite part about Lynchburg is the friends that I've um, come to have. It's helped me come out of my shell more and it's helped me become the person I am and the student I am. I, I really enjoyed how small the campus was and I also really enjoy um, how small the class sizes are. It made me feel like I was going to be more engaged than I would at a bigger campus. If someone was on the fence of coming to the University of Lynchburg, I would definitely love to sit down and have a conversation with them because I'm forever grateful that I made this choice. Um, it's definitely something that a student wouldn't regret. I, out of my four years here, I've not had one bad experience. I've had a great four years and I'm going to be very sad to go. Club Turner is hopping and the Hornets are hooping. Sunday ODAC action and early on the Hornets up 21. And Sam, what have you seen from a stat standpoint so far that has allowed Lynchburg to put up almost a 50 piece in this first half? Well, Lynchburg shooting 63%. No, I'm just kidding. I did think about leaving it that, but the Hornets shooting out of this world. I mean, they really aren't taking bad shots at all, and, and you do expect that to come down a little bit in the second half. Hopefully the shot selection continues at the same piece, but again, maybe Kim O'Connor is not going to make every single open look he has, but he has so far in the first half. You know, maybe the interior defense picks up a little bit from EMU in the second half, but so far Lynchburg's been patient down low. They've worked it in there methodically, not necessarily every time, just sort of switching it up like you would in football if it's, you know, zone or man defense or, you know, when to blitz, just things like that. Just thinking about it offensively, Lynchburg's really not hammering any one piece. And then it's not going to show up on the stat sheet, but I, I think Lynchburg through that first half has just been the more confident, more poised team. And I think some of that comes from playing at home. Obviously, this EMU team has not gotten a chance to do that yet. Uh, six straight games away from home to start the year. That's certainly a bit strange, a bit odd, and it's certainly not favorable to start your conference slate away from home but if you're Lynchburg it is favorable to do all those things and they're taking advantage of it with a 21 point lead at halftime. Well sometimes it's as simple as you have to make more buckets than the other team and like you said from a field goal percentage standpoint 63 percent from the field but also six of 12 from three that really stands out and oh by the way Lynchburg a team that doesn't get a lot of points in the paint well they have 22 right now lots of drive and dish and Using guys like Miles Taylor, Dre Ross down the lane, it has been a really fun show to watch. The Hornets are loose, and we'll have to see what they bring out as we go out of the break. 47 26 Hornets when we return.
When creating a sustainable future, your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow. Welcome back in Turner Gymnasium, Lynchburg ahead by 21 and two teams that are ranked 11th and 12th in the conference preseason polls, but obviously the numbers don't mean anything. You have to come out and play, and I think it's two squads that early in the season are really just trying to find their identity with some of the new looks around the roster. Yeah, I, th I think for Lynchburg, we've seen a little bit of both. At times, we've seen them look a lot like they did a, a year ago. Obviously, more often than not, that, that's been in the losses. But we were talking before the game started, and that Pfeiffer game, obviously, that did turn into a bit of a track meet. And, you know, great game really came all the way down to the wire. Pfeiffer gets the win. But, you know, Lynchburg still did a lot of things well there, and that's a game that, who knows, last year, maybe they're, you know, that game's over with 10 minutes to go, and instead they hang around, and sadly you drop that one at home. But, again, like I said at, at halftime, this is a Lynchburg team that when it's playing with confidence is just a really tough team to beat. They've got some great matchups that they can exploit, and when they do exploit them, things turn out really well. One of those is Cam O'Connor drifting out to the three-point line, waiting for good feeds. Another one's getting down, you know, getting downhill, splitting through the paint, splitting defenders. Some of those, it's kind of hard to draw up. You just have to take advantage when you see it. That's what Jake Hart did right out of the break. And for a freshman, his confidence has never wavered this season. It seems like he is really ready for the spotlight as Lynchburg just trying to keep that energy from the first half. Should note as well, other ODAC action. Randolph ahead of Bridgewater, 22 to 21 after a half of basketball. Just 10 minutes away, a very different game from what we have seen here as shot clock will go off and shot won't even hit the rim. So just like that start of the first half, Lynchburg shutting down the defensive end. Lynchburg's been great out of halves and just you know, starting out halves rather. You know, whether it's out of the halftime break, whether it's starting out just from scratch, you know, the 0-0 at the start of the contest. They've been really good at getting out to fast starts. A lot of times last year they'd get into a bit of a hole early on. That's not been the case this year. Uh, and certainly that's continued. Great offense, great defense to start. O'Connor back in the paint, and he's going to get another two. Lots of cuts. We saw Young even trying to go back door, but when you isolate O'Connor down low, it just seems like he finds the bucket, and he is exploiting that matchup down low. EMU trying to find the offense again. O'Connor, wait for the call. It's going to be a blocking foul. It would have been a great sequence if he picked up that charge, but it will be his second of the contest. Yeah, only two, and, and being that he's that, he, he does play the five for this Lynchburg team. He is the center down low, but again, he, he's not necessarily a prototypical center. He can spread out, he's athletic, he's long, and he can guard the perimeter. He's doing it right now in Watlington. Uh, so that, that does allow him to stay out of foul trouble, and Lynchburg as a team does a very good job staying out of foul trouble. Abiwe Malone will hit from three and get EMU started in the second half. We know back to O'Connor as well, one of those old souls, just a guy on this lineup that you really like to have out there because almost an extension of what Coach Scott is telling you in the huddle. He and Coach Scott, a relationship that goes back to when O'Connor was in high school. He's a Roanoke product, and that time, go inside, dish it back outside. O'Connor with the assist. Lynchburg's two leading scorers keeping it going in the second half. Can't talk about one person for too long or someone else will enter the conversation. Lynchburg getting it done all around. Tight defense on the perimeter as Watlington surveys. In the lane, Pearson Young got a hand on it. Will Dre Ross go for lift off again? How about an and one? Great decision and maybe a little get back there for DeAndre Ross, a subtle little point 
at the Fowler there is Jameel Davis, who of course first half blew a kiss to the Lynchburg sideline. Maybe taking a little bit of offense to that is DeAndre Ross. He's letting his game do the talking. And Lynchburg, largest lead of the day. They have come out of the half swinging. Already two guys in double figures, as we said. Dre Ross and Cameron O'Connor, those guys who will get it done out of the starting lineup. And we'll wait for the call from the ref. Looks like Pearson Young is going to get caught for the foul. That would be his third. I believe it's going to go against EMU. I think that may have been Watlington, so it may have been a, li a lane violation, excuse me. Tough to see with the threes and twos off the referee's hand. It will be one more shot, so lane violation, and Dre Ross will put another in. Don't give him a second opportunity. Ground down the court as we enter the second half. If you're Coach Felix, you really want to see an injection of energy. But Lunchburg has done well to shut down the option. Sometimes you got to hold it on as Die Jordan Brown finds the hoop. Yeah, if you're Coach Felix, you want to see that right there. I know that that's maybe a bit of an isolation shot. Some people might call it hero ball, but you got to get the ball in the hands of your two guards. Brown was held scoreless in the first half. Malong was held to just three. You got to get those guys going. Malong, it's a guy last year. He took this game over. I know EMU, when they played here at Lynchburg, did wind up falling, but he kept them in the game. He kept them close. Every time they needed a basket, they went to him. Lynchburg sealed that off so far, but EMU's going to have to find some way to get him some looks, and they've done it early and often in the second half. Career high, 27 points for Malong in that game that you mentioned. These teams playing twice last season, split the season series. But Malong, one of those guys who just facilitates everybody else's role on the court. Saw it a few games earlier this season as EMU traveled to Bridgewater for an early season tournament and just seeing some of the looks that they've done. Yes, the record is two and three, but it just seems like you're starting to get your guys like Malong and Brown in that backcourt really functioning. And again, Malong, I mean, you know, he scored 12 points in every outing this year. So I think some of the defensive looks he's getting from Lynchburg, if nothing else, just the intensity with which they are defending him, it might just be a little bit foreign to what he's seen so far this year. It's certainly been difficult for him to pick his spots as he's typically able to do. Pearson Young has worked his way to a quiet seven points on the day, and he's one of those guys as he continues to get confident in his sophomore season. It's a very familiar mid-range shot that we've seen from him as the ball just ricochets off the foot of John Faust. It'll stick with EMU. A little bit of a miscue there. Obviously not a, a critical error. You're up by 26, but Lynchburg gets the stop, and sadly you do give EMU another opportunity. We'll see if they can capitalize on it. Tried the back door, and a nice-looking pass as down low Nick Andres finishes. Back and forth, Davis and Ross go. Who can make a better play than the other? That was a fantastic pass, one of the best we've seen so far today. He finds the man cutting to the basket. And there you go, EMU does make good on that second opportunity. We've seen a few chances from that backdoor pass, but Lynchburg, particularly in the paint, has done well to shut it down as Jamil Davis, a little bit of a heat check, but they get another offensive rebound. And another that Malone corrals, and he will get a chance your coach Hillary Scott, you don't like that look. Two offensive rebounds on the same possession, and Malong will head to the line. Yeah, it, again, we've said it several times in the second half. The one thing you don't want to afford a team that's trying to get back into a game that's going to play fast, going to play physical in the second half, you don't want to give them those extra bites at the apple. You want it to be one and done more often than not. I think DeAndre Ross was had bigger ideas there, wanted to snag that ball away and set off a transition opportunity for Lynchburg, which isn't a bad idea. But I think first things first, when you're nursing, again, a 24-point lead here with 16 minutes to go, like time's on your side. I know Lynchburg doesn't want to deviate from what it is and doesn't want to deviate from its identity, but you know, at, at some point you just got to know it's okay to slow things down a little bit. Obviously, again, like I just said, time, big time factor for you. It's definitely in your favor. A product of experience when you can be comfortable with your possessions, working down the shot clock to 10 or even single digits and getting those good looks. Looks like the Hornets might try it now. Ross finds an opening in the lane. It looks like Malong might have had a hand as Faust, the second chance points are good. And once again, offensive rebounds making an impact. 
Yeah, just because we've seen EMU do it a lot in the second half, that doesn't mean Lynchburg's not capable of making EMU pay when they get second opportunities either. We already saw it, DeAndre Ross, because of the lane violation, after missing a free throw, got another look at one, he knocks it down. And, you know, you see there on the offensive rebound. So it's not like EMU is the only team on the floor tonight that's capable of getting those second chance opportunities. Now Jordan Brown hit the three. We'll keep it right here for the break. Brown, one of those guys, he transferred from Lynchburg before going to EMU, and he has really had a solid career, averaging just over nine points, three rebounds a game this season, but one of those guys who can find looks when he needs it. So this is the time of the season, Sam. We can talk all about Division Three. You can talk about the ODAC, but when we talked with Coach Scott at the beginning of the season, there are teams that are hungry. We know there are always ranked teams in the ODAC, but with some of the graduates knowing certain teams are looking different, this is the time of the season to really capitalize, and I think Lynchburg understands that in the huddle now. Absolutely. I mean, Lynchburg blessed a bit here starting out by, by the scheduling, and they'll have some tough stretches as we get deeper into the year, including one where they're going to face four of the top five teams in the preseason poll in a row. Uh, but, but starting out here, you've got an EMU team that you got to win against last year. Then you got a Randolph team that you got to win against last year, both of those two games on your home floor. Then you go on the road, you're going to play Virginia Wesleyan. That's a pretty good team. Uh, but then you get to come back, you play Ferrum, another team that you beat last year. So I, I think the opportunities are there for Lynchburg, especially early in the year. And we already talked a little bit about the benefits of having this brief conference portion of the schedule early on. Uh, I think even better than that, it's not just that Lynchburg's getting to see these teams, but I think maybe not seeing Randolph make in game one or game two is a big plus. Uh, and I think being in these opportunities, just like we talked about with the region or with Pfeiffer, even if you don't win them all, having games that are that are very winnable, that's going to change things down the line. And then maybe when you do go play Randolph-Macon, it's like you have the confidence to say, we, we can hang with this team. This is, you know, we know that we're better than we were last year. We know that we can hang with every team we've played so far. Why can't we do it with these guys? So, you know, you, you don't want to say scheduling is everything, but I, I do think that you can pick out a lot of positives just with how those break out from year to year. Well, as you said, home court advantage always a plus, and Lynchburg will be home two of their next three. That's sandwiched around that road trip to Virginia Wesleyan. Always a tough one if you're on this side of the state. Jake Hart will round it to the bucket, and it looks so easy when he gets into the paint. Mentioned the two guards for EMU only combining for three points in that first half, but Jake Hart for Lynchburg was also held scoreless. He's not always going to look to score, but a quick four points here in the second half to go with two assists. John Faust called for the foul, and we'll see if it's two or three shots. It will be two for Aviwe Malong as he straddled that three-point line. Six of eight on the day is EMU at the line. Malong has taken six of those eight shots. He's four for six, right around 75% on the season. So he's hanging right around that season average. These are those second half points where it's so crucial to get the easy ones. You can't really look at the scoreboard. Just understand that every little point is going to get this game back to where it needs to be. And we saw the run in the first half. So if EMU can start shooting. Lynchburg, 10 of its last 11 field goals made. So, you know, Sam, we can talk about runs. And it just seems like every single time that the Hornets come out of a break, whether it's first or second half, they bring their flamethrowers and make sure they're getting to the hoop. Well, and I think as you saw, you know, Malong knocked down a pair of free throws there. Those shots become really important when you have a hot team offensively on the other side. A, because you can get some buckets with the clock stopped. Uh, but B is a great play from start to finish there. Ross and O'Connor hook up again. Starting to sound like a broken record on that connection. But to continue that last point, the other side of it is you can hopefully break the rhythm a little bit of the Sunchburg offense. Obviously, that was not the case on that last possession. Well, if you need a highlight at the end of the game, clip that one. That was as nice of a move and dish as you're going to see from DeAndre Ross. Brown working the other way. It's going to pull up. Nice little fade. And we have seen very good moments from the Jordan Brown. He just seems very comfortable with the ball. Speaking of confidence, I've seen just a different look in the eyes, it seems like, of Brown and Malone, but maybe a different look in the eye of DeAndre Ross as well. DeAndre Ross so silky smooth getting to the hoop. And looks like it will be 17 points on the day. 
as this opportunity rims down. It's going to be two shots for Andres. And check that 19 points now for Ross, the leading scorer with Cameron O'Connor right behind him with 17. 19 for Ross on 8 of 10 from the floor. That's a career high for him. Uh, we neglected to mention Cam O'Connor, a career high for him as well. He's got 17. Uh, yeah, those two have led the way, but Miles Taylor gave a great boost there for a period in the first half. We've gotten some good offensive looks in the second here early from Jake Hart. And then obviously defensively, just from an energy and vibe standpoint, Jonathan Faust, his contribution has been huge today as well. Kevon James and Miles Taylor step in for Lynchburg and then for EMU number two, Aaron Brooks, as Andres will have his second free throw, the junior from Leesburg. Let's see what we get here from Miles Taylor as he checks back in second time today. The first time he came in, knocked down three of four shots, one from deep, two in close, two tough finishes down low. He can certainly score in a hurry. Taylor last game, 13 points, two rebounds, two assists. Again, off the bench, it just seems like he's been very comfortable with that role as Andres was committed to get to the hoop and he makes the easy one. So EMU slowly trying to clip away. Good point guard play there from DeJordan Brown. He corralled that pass, immediately knew where his guy was in the corner. Andres gets Taylor on the blow by with a little hip fake to the left side, ends up with a relatively easy layup. EMU pressuring that man defense, except they left Dre Ross open on the other end of the floor. Everything he's throwing up is finding its way in and a Lynchburg climbs its way back to a 23-point lead. So we'll take a quick break on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network and return on the other side, 13.03 to go. Lynchburg is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students so you can get all the support you need. In the classroom, in the lab, or in nature. You'll learn by putting yourself out there, and we're right there with you. Exciting action, and the ODAC opener between Lynchburg and EMU. Evan Gates alongside Sam Graham and we have just continued to see the energy pulsing, but EMU's really picked it up. Some longer possessions, not trying to force it and finding good shots to start the second half. Yeah, going into that timeout, Brooks a little bit late to the party invitation. Might have gotten lost in the mail. Uh, DeAndre Ross is putting on a show. He's up to 22 points, and he's certainly leading the way into the second half for Lynchburg. Uh, yeah, I mean, EMU's done a lot of things a lot better here early on in the second right now. Uh, time not in their favor and certainly dug themselves quite a hole in that first half. And Lynchburg, good job of keeping their foot on the gas. The intensity has not backed off. Well, we touch on defense turning into offense. 21 points off turnovers for Lynchburg. As Ross is fouled under the basket, Brooks will help him up and we'll have some substitutions. Looks like it'll be Jason Easton and Mason Makovic for Lynchburg. And then EMU brings in number 24, Marcos Perdales. 21 points off turnovers for Lynchburg, a really good clip because, again, I don't want to say only, but only 11 turnovers so far for EMU. That, that's still a decent bet here with 12 and a half minutes to go. Not quite as many as Lynchburg is forcing on average coming in. So we're going to get a run out here. Pick si Oh, missed the bunny there, did to Jordan Brown. They have to make our jobs hard to watch that one. Brown had everything. But the layup, and on the other side in transition, Miles Taylor is found. You can't have any much of a closer look from Brown on the other side. Somehow, ball skipped out, and Taylor will have two shots. Taylor looking to get that free throw stroke going a little bit uh, more than it has been so far, 66% on the year. And Lynchburg struggling a little bit at 57% on the day. So two makes would go a long way here. Just doing the little things right can really set you up for the games to come. As Landon Sutton steps in for the Hornets, we've seen some really nice moments from him this season, particularly thinking about the opener here against Regent just at that point guard spot, he can really strap down on defense and finds his shot on the perimeter. Defense, defense, defense. 
EMU's offense still trying to set up. We've seen lots of motion from the high post early in the first half, switching it up and maybe a little more spacing now. Brooks will use the screen, but the ball escaped. It won't be a foul. Now on McCobit. I think that one, oh yeah, it will be McCovic. Thought they were gonna get number five, Landon Sutton with the swipe down motion. I like the offensive look though from EMU. We mentioned uh, you specifically, Evan, coming into the game that they would likely look to utilize those high screens and then rotating down into the low block or settling there for some mid-range jumpers. That's one of the first times I can recall all day EMU really coming down, setting up in a half-court offense and utilizing a high screen. Obviously then we've seen the speed of Brooks. He can get to the basket in a hurry. Uh, did a good job there and does draw the foul. Gabriel Campbell steps in the ball game and yeah, to your point, I think the pick and roll is one of, if not the toughest thing to guard in basketball, so many options and what EMU has tried to do early in this game, maybe a little bit different from now, just trying to get patient looks. But when you have guys like Miles Taylor on the other end, your job gets a lot tougher. Downhill running, Evan, picking up some steam and Everybody on the floor right now playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. We touched on the fact that you know, sometimes you can get into a track race with Lynchburg, but I think if you ask Coach Scott, it's the discipline that they can play with and especially bringing in transfers who understand the pacing of the game, it can really help. And so when Lynchburg has been running, it just looks so much more poised, so much more comfortable than maybe what we've seen in the last few seasons. And Evan, you know, I <laughs> Said at the half, I, I kind of figured that even if the shot selection continued to be good, which it has in the second half, you just figured some of these shots would stop falling. And, and, and EMU certainly had some things that they would probably like to clean up. The coach Felix will be looking to clean up, but it's really hard to win a game when your opponent's shooting about 70% from the floor and 57% from three. I mean, this is just unheard of shooting display here from Lynchburg. And especially when you're getting looks right by the basket, Jason Easton finding the look. Got a trivia question for you, Evan. What number two point attempt was that for Jason Easton on the year? Let you think on that one. Oh, that might be number one. It's number five. Number uh, five. Low bought okay. it a little bit, but yeah, Jason Easton certainly known for his spot up shooting ability, and he's pretty darn good at it. As a Ken Brooks gets a defender on his back hip and explodes to the basket, he's doing a great job drawing some contact. Now just got to knock down those foul shots. They can add up and really make a difference, but EMU shooting 11 for 16 from the line so far, so not too much to clean up. And you know, back to Jason Easton, graduate of James River High School, he's just one of those guys where you put him on the floor off the bench, you're saying, okay, let's just get a few threes, get an injection, but he has really become a versatile ball player and what he brings to the floor, it's so many different looks, and that's why Lynchburg has found success early in the season. These guys who come out aren't playing one-dimensional basketball. They have different looks that they can utilize. He's one of those guys. He's going to embrace any role that, that he's given, and if on some days that, you know, maybe it's the three-point shot, maybe hasn't been falling at, at the natural clip for him today, he'll say, yeah, no worries. I'll put my head down, drive to the basket. I got playmakers around me. They will likely find me, you know, if I'm in the right spot to receive the ball, and I, I got to say, I'm really excited to see uh, when Elijah Davis is officially welcomed back into the fold as, as a full go participant, because I think he and, and Easton probably not going to be on the floor a lot at the same time, but Lynchburg going to have a dead eye shooter out there pretty much at all times and allows you really to find out who your hot stroke is on the day and then ride him in the second half. Anytime you can sharpen the arsenal is a good look. Kevon James wanted to get it in, but it will be fouled in. Sam, on that possession, you're letting the shot clock get down to four, three, two, and still finding quality looks. Yeah, Lynchburg just, even, even at times, you know, we really didn't see it against Regent, but, but certainly against Pfeiffer. At times, we mentioned just slipping into some of that pressing mode where it feels like you're forcing things, you're trying to force a shot, trying to force a transition opportunity. That just hasn't really happened today, and they've really been able to dictate the pace and the tempo of this game. I mean, I, I think you look at the three-point shooting, Lynchburg, 57% from three today, and we thought they might really struggle. This is a good uh, perimeter defensive team in EMU. Uh, Lynchburg's just stood there and knocked them down, but they're also not getting married to it. I think sometimes there's a tendency when, okay, a lot of these threes are going down, let's ride the three. That happened against Pfeiffer. It has not happened today. As Brooks gets to the hoop, can't connect. Also been pretty physical on the Lynchburg 
defensive end. We see 8,000 in the second half. It's a late deflection, we'll stay with the Hornets. But even with the MU and the bonus early in the half, they've found ways to really limit the amount of penetration and try and keep that shooting outside. Yeah, absolutely, and the outside shot, although it's fallen in bursts, uh, three in a row at one point, another back-to-back -back at another. Uh, it's five for 21 on the day from deep for EMU, 24%. Uh, uh, not shooting bad from the floor overall at 41, and another good day at the line. They've gotten to the line 18 times and hitting 72%, but yeah, that three-point shot has not been there today, and I think as we talk about Lynchburg not getting married to the deep ball, EMU at times, I think some of those stretches where they really tried to force the deep balls where they got into some trouble, got into this deep hole. James for three, couldn't connect. There's a foul on the loose ball. It will be number 10, Erickson Gomez Blanco. Be called for the foul. And I mean, there are guys on this EMU roster. You think about the backcourt, especially with the VOA Malong, what Don Jordan Brown has been able to do. They can find their spots, really utilize that mid-range. But lots of the offense in that first half funneled through the three-pointers. And Lutzberg has gone right through the paint as Miles Taylor adds two to the tally. Bang, bang, bang. Lynchburg inbounds it to Easton, goes right to Sutton. As soon as Sutton gets the ball, Taylor bounces into the low block. He's ready to receive it, puts it up and in. It's got to be a hot potato. Can't hold on to the ball for long. And heading the other way, Taylor. How about a little transition? Fouled in the lane. He could have gone coast to coast. We mentioned early on, you know, the question, the the – I guess just, you know, Scott, you know, Coach Scott asking of, of his senior senior wing in Miles Taylor saying, obviously we've seen him do great things and certainly had some great games against great teams. Um, but can, we, can you do it consistently? And we touched on that a little bit today. I mean, the, the scoring coming into the first four games for Taylor, six points, 14 points, zero points, 13 points. And we wondered, you know, could he back up that 13-point performance, that double-digit performance by – giving a, a reliable scoring output for Lynchburg again today, uh, I would certainly say that he has sitting at 14 right now and waiting to add another one or two at the line. Five for six from the field and now four for five from the free throw line. Taylor's just one of those guys and there's so many on every roster in the ODAC. But you think about Lynchburg and the energy, you bring him into the game, he's always going to contribute even if it doesn't show up on that stat sheet. EMU trying to find this offense again. Lunchburg has extended it to a 32-point ball game. Malong wants the screen. Trying to find that three-point window. It's just not open. But a long rebound. Malong corrals again. Working everything to the lane. And with the pressure, just seems like the Royals still get the offensive rebound in. They have really packed that paint to get those extra second and third chance opportunities. <laughs> Lots to unpack on that possession. Obviously, you do want to see Malone. You want to see him get some more opportunities, and sometimes that might be in isolation trying to create for himself. I thought he did force that one a bit, but see the second chance opportunity come up big again. That first one, Lynchburg allowed off the long rebound off the three. That was a tap out. That's going to happen from time to time. The second one is the one you really don't want to give up, and does allow a free throw opportunity, uh, but unable to convert on that free throw. Tyler Bugs enters the ball game for Lynchburg. First time we've seen him. And Landon Sutton keeping a little bit of strut in his stride. I think they call that shake and bake down here in the south, Evan. Sutton drops his man to the ground, calmly knocks down the basket. So poised and so comfortable in the moment is Sutton. Malong fires another three, and it will go with a late deflection sticking with EMU. We'll see if Lynchburg decides to use some of these different bench options. And we've mentioned the size, especially of Tyler Bugs, just a guy that, you know, coming as a transfer from Emmanuel, he has that size, but just has to find how to use it, especially at that position within this Lynchburg offense. Yeah, he's a guy that came into this year having not really played basketball in, in about over a year. Uh, so, yeah, I think just trying to get him works back into the fold slowly but surely. That's a guy that can really give you an advantage if you can get him worked in uh, to being a you know, reliable option. He's got a great imposing size. Uh, yeah, if you can get him ready to go as we get into the meat of that ODAC portion, I think that's a big advantage and maybe something you can hide a little bit if you're Coach Scott. You know, one of those things that you can 
shadow from your opponents. You may not have a lot of film on him. Stick him in there late in the year and get you some big rebounds. Well, that's one of the positives of having a big roster. We know lots of bigger rosters around D3, but you get 17, 18 guys on that bench, and you might have a diamond in the rough during conference play. Maybe you don't play as much during this stage of the season, but certainly opportunities, and I think at Lynchburg, Coach Hillary Scott understands exactly what people are trying to do is there's a lane violation and Lynchburg will get possession still up 32. We wondered if maybe we'd have, you know, finally see the close game between these two after a pair of double digit defeats. Uh, each team getting a win last season in the, the two game season series. So Easton knocks one down from way downtown. There comes the three ball for number 32. He shot that one from Canada. Maple touch as Easton going along with that trend. It's good shot selections, but can make you pay from three as it's going to be a foul that will send Jalen Jones to the line, the sophomore from Richmond. Jones 62.5% at the line on the year. Solid outing against Goucher, 4.6 rebounds, two steals. Another guy with size on this roster. You know, before this game, you're wondering how will that matchup look like when you have length just all around. It seems like everyone is over six foot. And it's just really been one of those aggression games where Lynchburg has come out and really made EMU earn it from the perimeter. And I think the absence of having that go-to guy down low, uh, or, or at the very least EMU not necessarily trying to exploit that, has been huge. Uh, Lynchburg on the other side has done that. I think teams that have been able to match Lynchburg's intensity and size down low have had some success. EMU just has not been able to do that today. It's going to be a foul that goes the other way. Taylor had a nice look from the post. And that's one of those battles when you think about hustle plays and aggression. I mean, every sport you're going to have a few, but they can make such a difference in basketball when you're hitting these runs and playing teams in the conference that is very stacked. We know lots of these teams are capable of winning, so every little thing will go a long way. Bugs got hit with the foul. I think they got him with the push off there. Nice athletic play though. He jumped up, kind of one-handed, tapped that ball back up and in. Obviously it doesn't count. And with the double bonus being in effect here for EMU, they go to the line. And now, Evan, we get to see one of my favorite players as, as far as the newcomers of the freshman class goes. Gonna have John Henderson check into the game. They call him JJ. Coach Scott's words before the year saying, we don't have somebody like him. Yeah, I've not seen a lot of minutes from him so far, but this is an incredible athlete that Lynchburg has, another guy deep in the bag on very a very deep bench. You pointed out his athleticism. Well, stat, court, stat categories like getting steals, getting rebounds, just roughing around, that's something that you can contribute right away with this Lynchburg squad, and Coach Scott really hoping to see it. Bugs. Working down low, nice spin to the bucket, just can't finish. That spin was nice, quick, and crisp. Left a little to be desired on the shot, but did a good job creating for himself a delayed pick and roll with Landon Sutton. Three ball off the mark, Miles Taylor with the rebound, and who else? 16 points, eight rebounds. Henderson to the bucket, make it two. JJ getting to the rack, and what we just talked about, seems like everything going down in the paint for Lynchburg. Now the shot chart is just incredible. A very high population in the paint, and then pretty much everything else coming from deep. Not a whole lot of mid-range abuse today for Lynchburg. Hornets doing a great job, though, just continuing to go down low. Like we've said over and over again, Evan, if it's there, might as well use it. Have to keep throwing darts at the wall. It helps when you know where the target is. Somehow the ball again rattles out. There's going to be a foul on the floor. And really, that's the day that EMU has had. It just seems like everything circles around the rim and goes out. But again, give credit to Lynchburg to really bringing this fight to the Royals. So we will get a quick break. And we're going to take a quick break before the conclusion of this game. 6-13 left to play. Lynchburg up big. Look what you 
what you're missing. Private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. We talked about Lynchburg and their depth this season. Well, there's someone else coming onto the floor for the Hornets, number four, Alex Fitch, the senior from Ashburn, one of those guys who can shoot and gets it done around the perimeter. But as Coach Scott has said all offseason, it's all about who can step into these new roles with a very different squad. Yeah, and Fitch, a familiar face that he's playing against today, fellow alumnus of EMU's Nick Andres, those two both graduates of Rock Ridge High School in Leesburg, Virginia. Andres not on the floor right now, but Fitch representing Leesburg here in Turner Gymnasium for the moment. Nice defense, the clamps down low, EMU tries to go the other way. Another three, that's just short. And EMU, a team shooting right about 20% from three today, Henderson. Got up one of the end one, but he will get to the line for two. Nice strength down low just to hold on. And that's one of those where you just you just got to match up. You just got to identify the guy down low, go run to him, and if nothing else, try to deny him the ball. I mean, Henderson didn't do a whole lot flashy there. He kind of just stood there on the doorstep, waited for Sutton to find him. Of course, Sutton did. A great floor general in his own right as he's going to you know, sort of back up Jake Hart throughout this year, those two. You always feel confident with one of them running the point. And again, Henderson, Goes to the free throw line, that's a win. If it's a free throw or if it's a basket, either way, certainly a good outcome. Well, that's when making threes early opens up in your offense. You've seen so many looks in the lane for Lynchburg, and then you get some of those easier passes down low when you have to respect every inch of the floor can really make your opponents ponder. It's going to be number 20, Gabriel Campbell, to the line. You know, we touched on it during the break, 540 left to play. You have to figure Lynchburg's going to get 100. They were right on the doorstep, 99 against Regent. And not that that's something the bench is always thinking about, but it shows how when this team is hot, they can really start racking up the totals. Yeah, and this is a Lynchburg offense that was high-powered, probably not necessarily the term I would give to it in the 22-23 campaign, at least not on a consistent basis. There were certainly some big outputs offensively. They come in today averaging 78. That is going to go over 80 after this fifth game result. As Lynchburg, it doesn't matter who they throw on the floor right now. Everybody's got the golden touch. Fitch just spots up and fires. We've had games where everybody who has entered the game has scored. Right now, just two of the Hornets who have been on the floor have yet to find the bucket. That's Parham and Bugs. But I mean, everybody making contributions, and this offense allows you to find the open man. Bugs down low. He gets fouled, so one of those two, he might have a chance at the line. Absolutely. Bugs, yeah, he doesn't, doesn't really look rusty coming in today. This is the third time we've gotten to see him this year. And, yeah, it's great to get him these minutes. Obviously, this, this game's pretty well in hand with less than five minutes to go, but still, you know, playing a conference opponent. Getting some solid minutes here down the stretch. I keep looking up and thinking that the clock's gonna, gonna read about 26 seconds left. You still got 454 to go, and Lynchburg's seven points away from the century mark. But yeah, there you go. Bugs on the board as well, so just gotta get Jordan Parham a bucket. Well, we mentioned the bonus earlier in the game. That'll always slow things down. But either way, lots of looks around the board and lots of good looks as Lynchburg is continuing to get it done. These are two teams that have just one player 
on each roster getting 30 minutes a game. It's a VOA Malong for EMU, Jake Hart for Lynchburg. So you see the depth, and especially at this point of the season, lots of coaches trying to figure out what roster and what lineup they're going to go with. Nice steal, almost back door, heading down the court, and an even tougher finish for Campbell. Yeah, Campbell on the first try down, just looking to poke it away from Landon Sutton, does get away from John Henderson. We expected to see EMU pressure a lot more, uh, pick up Lynchburg around half court. Uh, obviously Lynchburg likes to get out and run, so that makes things difficult uh, to do that as John Henderson puts in another basket. But uh, yeah, I mean EMU just has not really put that pressure up uh, high and far away from the basket there. They did, and it does result in a steal. We've seen them pressure other teams. They've done a great job of it up front. And if you're a Coach Felix, you like to see your guys still getting after it. Parham fouled on the way up, and he will be okay. Hops right up, and as we mentioned, this would be the last player that has entered this ball game for Lynchburg to score if JP can get it done at the free throw line. Yeah, and even arguably more impressive than that, only three players today that haven't hit a, a field goal. Um, obviously, Parham can knock down the second one. We will have every player for Lynchburg reaching the scoring column, but again, yeah, most of them doing it by knocking one down on the floor. And still 338, so certainly still time for our three. I'll see if Kevon James checks back into the game, and then Bugs and Parham both looking for that first field goal. Parham's gotten some great looks today, just the stroke hasn't quite been there, hasn't taken a ton of shots, came in averaging, I believe it was about three three-point attempts per game. Correction, over four. Today, not necessarily the case, but kind of see him still settling in and just finding the rhythm the game's presenting to him. I think that's an area he's really grown this year. Every game will give you new reps as McIntyre gets the two. And Eastern EMU, a team that has also allowed everyone to score but one on the floor. And so, you know, while there's a little bit of a stark proportion, still sharing the ball and finding looks. Lunchburg has just had that shooting percentage up a little bit in today's contest. Another nice move from Campbell on the defensive end. Will be a foul called and Lunchburg will go into their bench. So 2.57 to go. We're going to reset things a bit in the scoring column here for Lynchburg. A lot of new faces going to check in here in a moment. Yeah, and Lynchburg applying the foul there. I think just trying to avoid, obviously, a transition basket. But again, when your opponent's in the double bonus, you might just kind of want to let that one play out. But uh, yeah, love the hustle from the whole EMU defense as, as a group. These last couple possessions down, and then specifically from Gabriel Campbell. Might be some tired legs there as he Fails to hit anything there on the free throw attempt. Four substitutions, Steph Barber, Michael Gray, Matt Johnson, and Elijah Davis step onto the floor. And Davis, one of those guys, was, he's coming back from injury. It's great to see him back in Turner, and we know what he can do when he is healthy. He was a threat to be reckon, forced to be reckoned with last season. Another great hustle play there from Campbell, and then finding the open man down low. Again, this... It's a 32-point game. Lynchburg's going to pick up the win, but EMU fighting down to the last whistle. And, yeah, great to see Elijah Davis here back at home. Two minutes against Methodist. These are the first minutes of the year for him. And Trey Gillenwater, first minutes in a while. Matt Johnson wanted to pull up from three, the tallest guy on this roster, but he's saying, hey, I can still maybe get it done from the perimeter. Foul going to the lane. And... Fouls for both teams and double digits now. We've seen lots of physicality, and you mentioned sometimes it just seems like the scoreboard and the time just creeping along, but lots of different looks. Gomez Blanco will shoot two, and he makes the front one. 2.26 to play, and the first of a very treacherous ODAC schedule, but a great look for Lynchburg who has just come out with energy and pace and, and a season that has given them a lot of different looks. This is a great confidence booster. Gomez Blanco, product of the DR, the Dominican Republic. So we'll get a three ball from Elijah Davis. Bit off the mark, corralling the high rebound was Matt Johnson. He's going to go back to the free throw line. But, yeah, member of the U16 
Dominican Republic national team, obviously a former member as he is over 16 now, but Edickson Gomez Blanco, certainly a great player in his own right, representing the home country. Lots of diversity around this roster. We know Marcos Perdales, the product of Madrid, Madrid Spain, and then Aviwe Malong coming from Johannesburg, South Africa. Interesting point about Malong as well. Went to the Eastern Mennonite School, which is an astounding one minute away from the university. So lots of travel. On the other end, as Johnson missed both free throws, it's going to be a nice looking corner three for Gomez Blanco. EMU finding some good looks here towards the end of the game. Michael Gray going to pull up and knock it down. And Lynchburg's number one promo shot, Michael Gray. If you haven't yet, go to lynchburgsports.com. Look up the roster picture for Michael Gray. It is, it is a classic. He gets the first bucket of the game today. You will not be disappointed with some of those promo shots. Lots of creativity, to say the least, as Gillenwater worked to the bucket. Davis settled some of that Popovich offense, maybe pass first mentality. Gillenwater and a pull up from the free throw line just left of the rim. Gillenwater missed a lot of time, just injured off and on, so probably going to have to find his legs a little bit as they try to work him in. But how about EMU really heating up here down the stretch? That's certainly going to affect the stat sheet a little bit. Might not reflect the job Lynchburg did defensively early on, but credit to the Royals continuing to fight. Isaiah Carr with the three-pointer as Gray, another pull-up jumper. And it's going to be a deflection, no. So EMU will maintain possession. It's on a couple of those plays from Lynchburg, as you said, Gillenwater, who's been hurt. Almost seemed like Elijah Davis is trying to buy him a bucket, get that screen up top. Probably going to be one more possession that would be worthy of Lynchburg trying to score. Again, once the shot clock's off, we know Coach Scott, they'll just dribble it out. It's so probably just going to get one more opportunity to reach the century mark. Very similar situation to the Regent game, 99 points and the opening game for Jake Hart as a freshman, a really smart decision to hold the ball. Obviously, respect in the game comes first, but we know Lunchburg, a team that has not seen 100 very often. It's hard to do in the college game in general, but when you get that shooting percentage and field goal percentage up, can really be a nice product. Lynchburg shooting 63% from the field, 50% from three, nine of 18. And that heat has continued to cook in Turner Gymnasium. An interesting piece if you want to compare that Regent game. That was not that long ago, less than a month. Season opener, first career game collegiately for Jake Hart. CMU still pressuring big time on the defensive side. Trey Gillenwater looking lost, and Lynchburg's just got to take a timeout. But we'll go ahead and stay right here. Only 33 seconds to go. Uh, to continue that last, that last point, that Regent game, yeah, we saw Jake Hart check back into the game late, uh, maybe getting the freshmen some reps, you know, just even though the game was out of reach there, Lynchburg was going to win. Let's just get him some more opportunities, you know, try to try to get him as many of those real-time in-game situations as possible. Today, just game five of the season, no need from, from Coach Scott. He elects to go ahead, confidence in his starting point guard, although he is a freshman, saying, yeah, no worries, we'll give him his rest. He is leading the team in minutes, and seems like a sort of a, a, a nod in the, in the way of confidence here from Coach Scott towards his point guard. Well, still leading the team in minutes today with 23, just four points. So you look at the score at the stat sheet and say, well, maybe he didn't have as much of an impact, but it's the little things he does within the game that you don't always see. And as a facilitator, that pass first point guard that you really love to have on your team just seems like the court opens up a lot. Lots of pockets of space to find. Yeah, that's absolutely true. He certainly does do a lot of good things, a lot of things right uh, that don't show up on the stat sheet. He also does a lot of things well that do show up on the stat sheet as well. Matt Johnson for 100. Not going to work. Lynchburg still has possession. Elijah Davis can't finish. Matt Johnson up for two. There you go, the century mark. It took a few tries, but Lynchburg has 100 in the Hill City. And Evan, I know the shot clock's turned off, but again, heat of the moment. EMU's continuing to play hard. I got no problem with it. Keep yeah. your foot on the gas all the way to the end. Lynchburg 
with the shooting they displayed today, the effort they displayed, they deserve that century mark. Respectable fight from the Royals today. Lynchburg just shot it a little bit better, a little more hustle and poetic as we hit 100. 100 to 74 is your final from Turner Gymnasium and Sam, lots to digest. This is a team that, you know, on both sides, offensively and defensively, so many different contributions. But what stood out to you today? I think just, you know, we, we mentioned at the half the, the confidence and the poise that continued all the way through the second half. So that's a big thing that stands out. I also think the ability to, to sort of flex the depth of your bench to rotate a lot of guys in there. I know some of that, you know, comes towards the end of the game when the game was out of reach. So, uh, you know, some of that scoring in your depth isn't maybe necessarily reflective of how deep this team is, but it is certainly very deep. And I think that's something this team can lean on throughout the year. It's a long season. You play a lot of games. Uh, you're playing two or three times a week. So having that depth is huge. And you might not always shoot. 62% uh, is the final number for Lynchburg today. But you can always control that effort, that intensity. And I thought Lynchburg just did a great job of manufacturing that for itself today. You wondered if coming off of the break, maybe not a packed house in Turner, still a good crowd though, as the students start to trickle back in. You wondered what the energy would look like coming out, and although we had a slightly slow start, uh, once it got going, it was a snowball effect, and Lynchburg again, just keeping that foot on the gas. They ride it out, and I think a 26 point win is fitting, and, and Lynchburg earned it today. Well, so much comfort throughout this lineup. They have been solid, and looking at some of the stats, DeAndre Ross leads Lynchburg with 22 points, but I mean, there are guys left and right who got it done. You think about Cameron O'Connor. You didn't see much of them in the second half, but 17 points, three assists, three steals. Lynchburg had six on the day and 50 of their 100 points coming in the paint. So it just shows when you shoot the three ball well, so much of that lane will open up and you can get the easy ones by the basket. Yeah, I mean, the, the three ball's a huge part. You and I were texting about it just the other day during that Methodist game. I, I always think a good way to, to sort of measure you know, a team's true success is take out the three-point line, you know, take out those shots and see what the score would be. And if you're still winning after you do that, that's usually a good mark. That being said, the three is a huge thing to lean on when it's falling, and, and today it was falling. But again, Lynchburg, you know, we've seen this be a team that takes 30 threes in a game, 25 threes in a game. They never got married to it today, and I, I think that was huge. They, they found whatever was working on each particular, you know, group of two or three possessions or each possession itself. Uh, it never seemed like they were forcing anything really at any point in the game. Uh, and I think that's just what allowed them to, to never let EMU really get back into things. Well, so much fun. We won't hold you any longer. But Lynchburg getting it done again. 100 to 74, your final from Turner Gymnasium. And they will be back in action on Wednesday, taking on the Hill City rivals of Randolph. So on behalf of Sam Graham, our entire production crew, I'm Evan Gates saying so long from the Hill City.